Well, hello, I'm Bob Dandry. This is Transport Fever 2, The Long Game. Now, our airlines are actually starting to look okay. If I click on this one here, um, look, we're making a little bit of profit. Um, and I think if we find the other planes that are flying in and out of uh, Everett, we'll find they are profiting as well. Maybe not that one. That one's only got one person aboard. But I'm pretty sure both lines are actually in profit now. Yeah, um, well, AR101's marginal, um, but, you know, largely, yes, they're pretty much making profit, which is good. I was a bit concerned we wouldn't see any profit, especially starting working with airlines such late in the game. But no, we are making a nice, healthy profit. Now, the Metro line, uh, which obviously we built a couple of episodes ago. Last episode, we partially converted it into an underground line. And today, I just want to have a look at the passenger numbers here to start out. I'm looking here, Glendale Metro Station. Woo. 450 people waiting to head on to the airport. So who's going to the airport? About 160 people, not bad. And, you know, almost 300 are just wanting to go on to Wilmington. Obviously, it's a quicker way to get there than our um, old Cross River Main Line here. At the airport itself, decent amount of people waiting. Wilmington. Look at this. Wow. Um, we are actually overflowing a little bit. Chandler overflowing a little bit. And Oklahoma City is looking not too bad. So I think we're actually going to continue to expand the services running on this line. Let's have a look. We've got five minute frequency right now. And apparently we're losing money, which is weird. Um... I don't understand profitability in this game. Sometimes it just doesn't seem to make sense because we need high frequency here because we're not, you know, catering for all the customers that want to use this line. I, I'm assuming this is because, um, you know, they just happen to have had the uh, um, running cost supply at the wrong time or something like that because I want to add more trains onto this line. If we head back over to our depot, we've still got three Acela Express trains sitting here I'm just waiting to be, you know, moved on to other lines or something like that. So I'm actually going to put another two trains on this line. And I am hoping that this is a good idea. <laughs> We've uh, increased our frequency again to every four minutes. So this is becoming almost rapid transit sort of frequency, which is good to see. Um, I'm going to rename it the Everett, Air the Everett Airport Metro, I think. And we'll just keep an eye on that sort of balance and just see how we're going. I was going to say no one's moving. It's because we're auto saving. Um, so, of course, no one's moving. But it looks like things are looking pretty decent right now. Um, you are waiting to head on to the airport and you... Uh, just leaving the airport. So, yeah, I think it's looking okay. I think we are in a position to take advantage of all of that passenger demand and hopefully things go all right. Now, I think I want to spend the next couple of episodes, which will probably be, you know, among the last episodes of this series because we are getting a little bit long in the tooth now. I really want to spend some time trying to break this um, congestion that we're really having sort of honestly quite large issues with we have you know especially around this sort of corridor glendale wilmington el paso richmond massive congestion and as well this corridor between chandler and wichita also massive congestion now i did build a second um, junction for uh, wichita falls which seems to be getting a little bit of use but it doesn't really really seem to be affecting this uh, congestion all that much so as you can see like we've I, th I think it's maybe reduced a little bit but not a massive amount now i've done some upgrading of some of these sort of uh um highways we'll call them uh to four lane and i think we might try and continue doing a bit of that but i also want to have a look and 
use our destination layer just to see where is everyone heading. And one thing I'm noticing is this road uh, has a lot of traffic, 993. I'm assuming that's how many people actually want to use it right now. And yeah, look at that. This is heading over into Salem. And as you can see, we've got, well, a little bit of gridlock at Salem. Not heaps, but definitely uh, we've got a bit. And it is also going on over to Fullerton as well. So, um, you know, you know, I love building motorways, apparently. <laughs> so let's see what we can do um, to potentially alleviate some of those issues. What we could look to do is build a motorway from Fullerton, have it maybe go under Everett, maybe have a couple of uh, junctions in the city itself and then join on to our original motorway over here. That's possibly an option we could look at. Um, and we could also look to have a more direct connection from this sort of Glendale area into Salem as well. Um, sort of break off maybe like here and head off in that direction as well. That will save people having to travel through Everett to get where they need to go. And I think that's what we'll start with. Um, I think probably somewhere around here would be a good option. We've got a bit of sort of spaghetti type stuff here, so we can probably clean that up a bit. So I think we could potentially look to build through here. Oh, hang on. We've done something weird. No, not, not that. We could maybe replace this connection here with this new highway. I reckon, um, is that the best route? It's probably not too bad, actually, um, going that way but I do want to make this grade separated. Yes. Probably not going to get down quick enough, are we? Um, almost. Hmm. I don't like removing suburban roads because, you know, you'll lose housing and stuff like that, but I think we might need to. So this should be the first step towards um, somewhat increasing the throughput here. We are no longer going to have people traveling all the way through Salem to get on to Everett. We might as well reroute this, which isn't an important route, I don't think. Does it connect to anything? No, it just, it just connects to industry. So no one's actually going to be using it, but of course we're going to maintain the connectivity. Uh, we might do that through the town itself rather than uh, connecting to our highway. And I was going to keep this and just have it sort of organically drain, but no, we'll just remove it entirely and get people moving where they actually need to be going. I might as well uh, just realign this road as well. Like so. Cool. We might as well expand all of this to four lane as well. Because um, we are sort of bottlenecking things, I think, by having four lane go down to two and then back up to four on the other side. Uh, so we'll keep it as a sort of country road as far as we can, probably into about here. We'll then convert it to a four lane um, urban road. And yeah, what do we got? We got too much slope. On what? I guess over the rail line, right? 
Or is it that right there? Possibly. We might see if we can rebuild this. Yeah, I think that's okay. Um, but we might convert that. And probably not have a five way either. That's not going to help our uh, help our issues. So we might have you go around and join up here. I've completely screwed the pooch here. Okay. I think that works. And just this bit left to upgrade. So fingers crossed that goes all right. I might remove this connection as well and we will take ownership of this to stop hopefully any new connections in this area. And yes, I'm definitely thinking we need to build that motorway. Um, there is so much traffic wanting to turn right to head through. I'll just check our destination layer again just to make sure um, that, yeah, they are sort of splitting off, making their way through the city a couple of different ways, and then sort of on to either um, Richmond or on to Everett. So I'm not sure if we should sort of split the difference and just have a junction here, or if we should head one way or the other. I don't know if going through the middle here is actually going to be that effective. It probably will cause sort of both sides to say uh, this is going to take too long. But uh, I'm willing to give it a go. <laughs> so so we're going to do it. Uh, this will be a two lane um, protected roadway rather than the three lane we used for our main orbital. And we're going to sort of skirt, I think, around the edge of Salem, maybe build a junction here. In fact, yes, uh, I have changed my mind. It's not a maybe. We are going to build it. Then once we've passed Salem, um, obviously, we've got this sort of hill quite large hill that we need to pass so we might actually head down and head under and maybe continue to head down I wish I could build straight. There we go. And yeah, from there we will make our connections. Because we're so close here, I'm wondering if we might have a sort of just a cut through here um, for anyone who's wanting to go on through to Wilmington, maybe. Then what we can do is actually reduce this to a single lane. And that probably makes a little bit more sense.
And I'll convert part of this, but I don't want the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is make a little junction there. We'll, I was going to say we'll convert this bit, but apparently we're going to hit too much slope. It worked anyway. So there we go. Because I want to break this off and have dedicated lanes going on or off each way. And then we'll split off into uh, the two lane to sort of make this movement happen. Okay, so we built it in one direction. And I'm hoping we can use the parallel tool and it'll work for us today because it seems to be, um, let's say, very inconsistent in terms of whether or not it will actually work. And unfortunately, I can't actually build it underground, apparently. Can we at least build this bit? There we go. Here we go. Oh, that's actually very close together, isn't it? <laughs> definitely was a collision. That's definitely the reason why uh, we weren't able to build that, isn't it? And they are heading in the correct direction as well. That is good. But uh, yeah, um... Can... How do we... It doesn't look like there's an option to go underground. Unfortunately. So we, uh... It's gonna have to build the rest manually, I guess. I suppose that's okay because uh, no one's really going to see it, are they? I suppose we'll know that it looks crap if it looks crap. Um, but no one else will. It'll just be our little secret. Overall, it could be worse. Could be worse. And we might do the same thing here, I think. All right. Pretty decent, I think. And... We much just need to build the connection. The question is, how are we going to do this? I think primarily people would be coming from... Um, from Fullerton, I should say. So we might be best to try and... Prioritize that movement, potentially. I'm just thinking... So to do that, we would... Like build like this. And then... Sort of build like that and... Go over the top. Does that make sense? I think it does. And we are starting to see use already, which is good. I uh, just need to reverse the direction here. It would be good if we could have two lanes going that way and only one going that way, but the game does what it wants, I guess. Um, and that's how it's decided that it wants to be. I did say I was going to build an interchange here and I should probably do that because uh, that's not great. 
I'm not sure what difference it'll have, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> That's really all you can be in these situations, isn't it? I don't even know if we need one in the other direction, to be honest. Um, but we'll do it anyway. Just for the sake of completeness, I guess. And we've already got a few people wanting to use that. That's good to see. That is a good thing. <laughs> so I think our two current air routes are doing well enough that we can look to introduce an additional one. Now this is going to be probably a another small route like the AR210 and it will be from Roseville to Peoria. So we'll get another two Bombardier CS300s purchased and we will set up a new line for them. Lovely. Whoa, look at the Cedar Rapids freight shuttle. It's got so much stuff wanting to go out and we've only got one train running. How's it going? It's doing well, actually. So we could potentially increase our service on that line. Where are you right now? You are a long way from being ready to load up again. So yeah, I think let us add an additional train on here. What I'm wondering is how this little node of commercial has really built it all considering <laughs> it's not connected to the rest of El Paso. Um, and if I remove that connection, I've done that like 50, 60 years ago, which would have been when we were building our line and putting the big boys in. So I don't know how it's <laughs> survived even more than that, like 70, 80 years ago, maybe. So who knows? Um, I don't know the purpose of this, but I feel like we should help them out, if I'm honest. We might be able to get over the top here. Oops. If not, we can just build a level crossing. It's not a particularly busy road or rail line. So we're just going to do that, to be honest. And we will also connect things here as well. Yeah, not, not entirely sure what's happened. <laughs> um, but we are righting the wrongs of yesterday, I guess you could say. As you can see, we've got a lot of traffic using this back road as well, which is not great. Look, the congestion along the whole road network is not great. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. Um, I have tried my best to uh, increase throughput by adding more lanes because, you know, nothing ever went wrong just by adding more lanes to roads, right? It's a perfect way to solve any issue. Um, yeah, this is not, not an issue that was caused by adding more capacity at all, was it? Definitely not. Looks like we do have some additional capacity needed potentially on our outer suburban loot. So I'm just going to check all of them. Um, at Wilmington, yeah, a little bit maybe. Upper Everett's looking actually unpopular now. I, I suspect probably a lot of people are using the metro station. Um, Salem, not really, but we're at capacity anyway because the Chandler Roseville line is going gangbusters. El Paso West, yeah, not really needed either. And at Richmond, yeah. So we could maybe add one additional train on. I don't think it needs really too much else. What's happening here? Why are you guys not happy? You can just use the other track, can't you? So we might, 
Uh, hang on. I'm, I actually want to check. That's okay. 1.4 mil loss is not terrible um, as a line. Or in the other direction. It's still not terrible, but yeah, maybe we will leave it, actually. But, like, there's just so much waiting there. Surely carrying those passengers is worth a slight loss we might incur. I'm going to do it. So we're just going to go with ACS 64s. Actually, hmm. What are these? Are these multiple units? Hang on. Tell me more. I think these are, aren't they? APV, I don't know what that means. We're not in the Midwest here. Um, I think that's probably the most Amtrak-y sort of thing, isn't it? don't know as well what um, configuration these are supposed to be. I might actually quickly check that. A few moments later. Oh, this is interesting. These are not multiple units. They are just like a, that's like a cab to sort of run it in reverse, but they do have what's called auxiliary power units, which are these ones that have pantographs. So that's interesting. Um, so we will actually use those with um, with the ACS 64s then. That's actually really cool. I like that. And the APVs go closest to the locomotive. Cool. Okay. Might actually be able to fit a few more in. Yeah, okay. We'll get two of those purchased. Pretty expensive. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll get one on the clockwise and one on the counterclockwise. Yeah, and I think the Chandler to Roseville via Fulton line is another line we need to increase our capacity on. I'm just looking at everywhere that it's stops and yeah especially on this sort of corridor um sort of san francisco onwards um we're definitely struggling a little bit for capacity oh yeah okay so we might get a probably two more uh trains purchased we'll do the same thing that we've built here um in fact i might actually um clone these and then just quickly change to the required line. And yeah, I think these are going to do hopefully pretty well. And yeah, they are really cool looking cars as well. Unfortunately, it's got the Amtrak Midwest when we're not really Midwest here, but yeah, is what it is. Um, you can't really see it unless it's close up. I believe they are purchasing these for the Northeast Corridor as well. Potentially they're not out yet. I don't know. Um, I'm not heaps up on uh, American locomotive and rolling stock purchases. I just, you know, <laughs> uh, do what looks cool, I guess. Well, it really remains to be seen if this work we'd be doing this episode is actually going to make a difference or if it's just going to make things even worse. I find traffic in Transport Fever 2 to be extremely fickle. It's slow to respond to changes in your road network, things like that. Maybe I'm just not good at this game, but I, if I compare this to like City Skylines, I find City Skylines traffic much easier to handle and to sort of direct in the right you know, direction that it needs to go. But regardless, that is going to be about all we have time for in this video. I don't know how long this video is going to end up because I was struggling, <laughs> to be completely honest. 
Um, you can definitely tell that we're getting towards the end of this series here. I think we will stick around for one more and then that is going to be it for Season 4 of Transport Fever 2. Um, there will be a special sort of short um, Transport Fever 2 series over Christmas. I'm trying to record that in advance um, because I'm probably not going to be home much over Christmas. Um, so I guess we'll just see how we go. I think we'll have a fair length or in terms of number of episodes, um, but I don't know if it'll sort of last over the full Christmas period. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video. You can find links to all my social media in the description, so please jump on there, like, follow, subscribe, do all that wonderful stuff. Big shout out to my Founders Club patron, Caleb. Caleb, thanks so much for helping to make this content possible. If you've enjoyed Transport Fever 2 The Long Game, why not give something back to the channel? You've got a couple of options now. You can join as a patron over on patreon.com forward slash Bob Dendry. You can also join with a YouTube membership as I'm now a YouTube partner. Or for a one-off payment, you can also give a super thanks to this video. But until next time, I'm Bob Dendry. This is Transport Fever 2 The Long Game. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.